In March 2025, Saturn gained 128 new confirmed moons in one massive discovery, bringing its total to 274 and making it officially the planet with the most moons in the solar system. Now imagine all of them suddenly appearing around Earth. Would Earth survive? Let's find out. Let's start with Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the troublemaker of the group. Now this thing is huge, 3,200 miles across, one and a half times bigger than our moon. It weighs 80% more than our moon as well, backing almost twice the gravitational punch. But here's what makes Titan really special. It has weather, an atmosphere 1.5 times thicker than Earth's, thick orange clouds made of nitrogen and methane, lakes that cover an area larger than the Great Lakes combined. It's like a whole other Earth, just weirder. All of the atmosphere stays put because Titan has strong gravity and lives in Saturn's protective bubble. But now it's orbiting Earth, and Earth's gravity, not strong enough. Titan's atmosphere starts bleeding away into space. Those orange clouds begin to thin. Lakes containing 300 times more hydrocarbons than all of Earth's oil reserves start boiling off. You're watching an entire world die right above your head. And while that's happening, Titan's massive weight is doing something terrible to our oceans. Remember how our moon creates tides? You know, high tide, low tide, twice a day? Our moon weighs 73 billion trillion tons. And as Titan weighs almost double our moon, it creates almost double the tides. Coastal cities don't just flood, they get swallowed. Miami disappears under 200 foot walls of water, and New York skyscrapers become islands. The entire Netherlands, home to 17 million people, vanishes underwater. And this happens twice a day, every day. I really hope you don't live near the ocean. Then there's Enceladus, the ice volcano. Now this little moon looks innocent, pure white, smooth as a cue ball, only about 300 miles wide, roughly the size of Arizona. But it has a trick. Massive geysers shooting ice and water 300 miles into space from cracks at its south pole. We're talking about 400 pounds of material per second blasting out at 800 miles per hour from tiger stripe cracks that are 80 miles long. The geysers contain over 100 different organic compounds, basically the ingredients for life. When Enceladus orbited Saturn, those geysers shot harmlessly into empty space. Now they're shooting at us. Every 33 hours as Enceladus swings around Earth, you get hit with ice chunks moving at thousands of miles per hour. That's 400 pounds of cosmic ice every second raining down on a planet with 8 billion people. It starts like a pretty meteor shower, then you realize that those aren't meteors. They're chunks of alien ice containing potential alien microbes raining down on your neighborhood. Your car gets dented, your roof gets holes, and going outside becomes a game of cosmic dodgeball where the balls weigh as much as bowling balls and move faster than bullets. And there's really nothing you can do about it except wait for the next pass. But the creepiest one has to be Mimas. Mimas is only about 250 miles wide, smaller than Texas, so it shouldn't be that scary. Except for that crater. The Herschel Crater is 80 miles across, covering one-third of the entire moon. The walls rise three miles high, and it looks exactly, and I mean exactly, like the Death Star's weapon from Star Wars. Whatever hit Mimas packed the energy of 10 billion nuclear bombs. I mean, the impact almost blew it apart completely. If the moon were 20% smaller, it would have shattered. The shock was so violent, it cracked the entire opposite side of the moon. Now imagine looking up at night and seeing that giant crater staring down at you. And here's the thing. Scientists just discovered Mimas has an underground ocean 12 to 18 miles beneath its surface. So there could be something alive down there. Something alive watching you from inside the Death Star moon? Sleep tight. Then there's Hyperion, the moon that lost its mind. Now most moons spin predictably, but Hyperion, it tumbles completely randomly. It's shaped like a sponge, 170 miles long, and covered in deep holes and craters, with a density half that of water. It's basically cosmic foam floating in space, and it flips end over end in ways that make no sense. The scientists literally cannot predict which way Hyperion will be facing from one day to the next. Its rotation period varies between 13 days and several months. It's chaos with a moon-sized attitude. Imagine trying to build a calendar around something that can't even figure out which way is up. One week it's spinning clockwise, the next it's doing backflips. Ancient civilizations would have thought the gods were having a breakdown. Now, let's talk about what 274 moons do to the planet itself. 
our moon creates those nice, predictable tides. High tide here, low tide there, everything on schedule. But 274 moons, each pulling from different angles at different times? Well, the oceans don't know what to do. Water sloshes around like it's a washing machine, tides become completely random, and coastal areas begin to flood and drain without warning. Venice floods permanently, every beach becomes a gamble, and surfers give up and become mountain climbers. But it gets worse. All that gravitational pull doesn't just mess with water, it messes with the ground. Earthquake faults that have been quiet for millions of years suddenly wake up cranky. Volcanoes that went extinct, they're back, baby. And the entire ring of fire around the Pacific becomes the ring of everything is actually on fire. California gets hit with magnitude 9 earthquakes every Tuesday, Yellowstone starts looking suspicious, and Japan becomes a real-life disaster movie. But here's the thing nobody thinks about. 274 moons can't all fit in Earth's orbit. Saturn is massive. It can hold that many moons in stable orbit. But Earth? Not so much. So they start bumping into each other. When two 50-mile-wide moons collide at 20,000 miles per hour, they don't just bounce off. They explode into millions of pieces. And those pieces don't just disappear. They speed out in orbit, creating rings around Earth. Which I'll admit does sound pretty, until you realize those ring pieces are house-sized chunks of rock moving at bullet speeds. Your nice meteor showers become deadly orbital bombardments. Cities start getting hit by former moon chunks, satellites get shredded, and the International Space Station becomes the international sitting duck. Going outside means wearing a helmet. And not for style, for survival. And then comes the worst part. Some of those big moons start spiraling toward Earth. Earth's gravity isn't strong enough to hold something like Titan in a stable orbit forever, so it starts falling. Slowly at first, but then faster. And when a moon the size of Mercury hits Earth, it's not just an impact. It's the end of everything. The dinosaurs got taken out by one asteroid. We're looking at multiple moon-sized asteroids over the span of a few decades. It's game over. But hey, maybe there's a bright side. I mean, Earth wobbles slightly as it spins, and that wobble sometimes causes ice ages. With massive moons like Titan providing gravitational stability, that wobble might smooth out. So no more ice ages, and more predictable weather! Now, of course, this assumes that civilization survives the tidal waves, orbital bombardment, and general planetary destruction. But stable climate! That's something, right? I mean, what would this mean for everyone on Earth? Well, about 40% of Americans live near coastlines, and that's 130 million people who suddenly need to move inland as their homes disappear under chaotic tides. Every island nation becomes uninhabitable as their entire way of life gets swallowed by unpredictable seas. Shipping stops, there's no more global trade and no more Amazon deliveries. Sorry, no more bananas in Alaska either. GPS stops working because satellites keep getting destroyed by orbital debris. And space exploration? Forget about it. Low Earth orbit becomes a war zone of flying moon chunks. And farming also becomes impossible as the crazy gravitational effects mess up seasons and weather patterns. Within a few years, we're looking at the collapse of modern civilization. And time itself stops making sense. Our calendar is based on the moon's 29 and a half day cycle. Nice and predictable. But with 274 moons each doing their own thing at their own speed, months become meaningless. I mean, do you track all 274 moon phases? Maybe create a calendar that's 900 pages long? Eventually, you just give up and start counting days until the next major disaster. What day is it becomes which moons are about to crash into each other? In the end, having 274 moons would be the most beautiful disaster in human history. I mean, imagine sunsets with a dozen different moons hanging in the sky, ice crystal meteor showers, glowing ring systems around Earth. It would be absolutely spectacular. At least for the few years before everything fell apart and killed us all. Saturn's moons belong with Saturn, way out in the cold where they've spent billions of years learning to get along. Sometimes, the most amazing things in the universe are amazing precisely because they stay far away from us. If you enjoyed watching Earth get completely destroyed by cosmic forces, be sure to hit that like button and let us know down in the comments which of Saturn's 274 moons you'd want to see in our sky. Even if it did mean the end of our world.